One of the important features regarding NSX is its tight integration with vCenter because the NSX manager is going to be dealing with and working with ESXi hosts and also other VMs in the vSphere environment. So the integration between the NSX manager and its tight coupling with the vCenter is a critical first step. So in this video, here's what we get to do. We're going to take the newly deployed NSX manager. We'll put on our VMUG Advantage license on that NSX manager so it can function. And then secondly, we'll train the NSX manager on where is this vCenter that you can work with. And we'll also set up the credentials so that effectively NSX manager can log in and interact with vCenter. So here's a big picture look at our NSX nested lab environment. And what we're going to do is we are going to log in to our NSX manager at dot 21. So we'll go to HTTPS colon slash slash 192.168.1.21. We'll log on as admin with the password I set for the NSX manager when we deployed it from the template. And then we'll go ahead and proceed to apply the license from BMUG Advantage. That's the one year eval license for NSX manager. And then secondly, We'll go ahead and introduce the NSX manager over to our vCenter, which is at dot 35, and we'll supply the credentials so it can go ahead and log in. So in our nested environment, that would be administrator at vSphere.nested. And that way for future interactions between NSX manager and vCenter, we'll have the credentials and that communication all set up. So again, that'll be our second step here is NSX manager and vCenter. So to do that, let's go ahead and open up a browser and connect directly from our management computer right here over to the NSX manager and begin the process. So I've opened up a browser to HTTPS colon slash slash 192.168.1.21. And just be aware that when we power on the NSX manager, it may take five to 10 minutes for it to fully initialize and be ready. So if you're not sure whether or not it's even reachable, you might want to start off with a ping just to verify you can ping that IP address. And then if you can ping that IP address or the IP address you set up for the NSX manager, then just give it a few more minutes to fully initialize. So this is a good sign. We simply can't verify the certificate for the NSX manager, perfectly fine on a new server, and we'll click on advanced, and then we'll click on proceed. And the reason that I'm including some of these errors in the deployment and initial connectivity is because it's gonna happen to you as well. Sometimes things take just a few minutes to boot up, and I want you to be prepared for the fact that it may take a minute. So the fact here that it said that this IP address 192.168.1.21 is currently unable to handle the request. That's much different than just no response at all from the server. So again, the first step, if you're concerned about basic connectivity would be just to do a ping, for example. So I'm gonna ping 192.168.1.21 and that's responding. So I have IP connectivity. And again, it's just taking a few additional minutes here for the web interface for the NSX manager to be made available. It's also worth noting that on the very first boot up of our NSX manager, which I just realized that that's what we're doing here, we've never powered it on before, there's a lot of initialization it has to do. So on the initial boot right after deployment, again, it may take several minutes to be ready. All right, so I just did a refresh and we have an error code 101, component help unknown, and that is a better sign. So that just indicates that it is going through its paces. And if we do a refresh every minute or two, these messages will change until eventually when we do a refresh, we'll actually get the interface. So I just did another refresh and now we have a slightly different message. And again, these are good signs that the NSX manager is on its way to be up and functional. And all right, so after about five minutes and another refresh, it is now ready for us to log in. So this is the welcome page or the login page for the VMware NSX manager. So I'll log in as admin. I'll go ahead and supply the password that I configured when we deployed this template and we'll click on Login. So here it's asking us to accept the end user license agreement. We'll scroll to the bottom here and we'll say yes and continue. And it's asking us if we want to join the customer experience improvement program. And for my lab environment, I'm going to go ahead and say no to that and click on save. So currently the theme is the dark mode. So I'm going to go for recording purposes and click here to change the theme to the light theme. Fantastic, and this is the NSX manager. It's also giving us a message up here saying, hey, you don't have backups. And we'll say, okay, we'll fix that. So we'll close that. And the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and apply licensing. And again, for the licensing, I'm gonna use the eval license that I got as part of my VMUG Advantage membership so we can use the features and functions of NSX. So we'll click on system up in the top. And with system selected on the left-hand side, if we scroll down, there's a section under settings for licenses right there. So we'll click on licenses. 
And then we'll click on Add License. And I'm simply going to plug in the license I got from the VMUG Advantage program to be used with NSX. So with that license applied, we'll go ahead and click on Add. It's also warning us that the browser is going to refresh automatically after that license is applied. So we'll click on Add. And it's doing a refresh of the browser. And once it's done with that refresh, that new license will be applied to that NSX manager. So as far as our game plan is concerned, we have just licensed this NSX manager right here. So that part is done. And our next step is to go ahead and link up the NSX manager with the vCenter. And that way they can communicate with each other. And if we're going to deploy VMs, for example, such as edge nodes and so forth, the NSX manager, because it knows about this vCenter and has permissions there, can request the placement of those VMs. Another use for the integration between the NSX manager and vCenter is if we want to take a couple of hosts and add the responsibility of being not just ESXi hosts, but also being NSX host transport nodes. And so all that requires the integration. So that's our next step is to integrate the NSX manager with vCenter. So we're going to do that right here from the graphical user interface for the NSX manager. So after the refresh, this is the message I'm getting. And I'm going to say, please don't show the quick tour again. We'll click on skip. And in the future, if we want to launch that quick tour, we can just go up here to the help. And from the drop down, there's an option right here for view product tour if we want to go through that. We also have a warning up here that we don't currently have a backup. So we'll say thank you to that. And now we have a NSX data center evaluation license in place, courtesy of VMUG Advantage. And again, the intention is to use eval licenses in an eval fashion, for example, a home lab or a business lab. So you can get hands-on practice working with products and doing proof of concept and those kinds of things. So now that we have the license applied here in the NSX manager, our next step is to do the integration between the NSX manager, what we're currently looking at, and the actual vCenter. So to do that, still with the system tab selected, on the left, we're going to expand Fabric. And below Fabric, we're going to click on Compute Manager. So Compute Manager is a fancy way of saying your vCenter. So by default, the NSX Manager has no clue about which vCenter you want to integrate with. So what we would do here with System Selected, and on the left, under Fabric and Compute Managers, we simply click right here, Add Compute Manager. So we'll click that. And let's name this Nested vCSA for our Nested vCenter Server Appliance. And because I don't yet have any DNS set up internally in my nested lab environment, we'll simply put in the IP address of our vCenter server. So if we take a peek here, our vCenter, our nested vCenter is right here at 192.168.1.35. So on the NSX manager, that's the IP address that we're going to use as we point to this vCenter. So that is 192.168.1.35. Fantastic. And now as you scroll down, it wants the username and password required to log in to vCenter. So our nested vCenter single sign-on domain is vSphere.nested. So we're going to specify here administrator at vSphere.nested, just like that. And then specify the password associated with that administrator account at vSphere.nested. So I've supplied the password. If we know the SHA-256 thumbprint, we can put that in for extra security just to make sure we're connecting to the right device. Otherwise, it'll prompt us and show us what that is, which is fine. Then it's asking, do we want to create a service account for NSX Manager to use over in vCenter? So I'm going to say yes to that. And then for the enable trust, I'm going to enable that as well. And then for access level, I'm going to specify full access to NSX. So that way, in the future, if we start adding things like the NSX application platform, which involves Kubernetes, we won't have a problem because of permissions there. So with those set, we'll click on Add. So it's coming back with the thumbprint. I'll click on Add. And bada bing, bada boom. We've now added the Compute Manager, aka the vCenter, as a Compute Manager that the NSX Manager can work with. So down here, if we want to modify the columns, we can click on Columns, and we can choose which columns we want to see or not see. So I'm going to remove a few columns here just to make it a little easier to see and maybe resize these a little bit. So there's the name of the Compute Manager. There's its IP address. There's the type. And once it's connected and all ready to go, it also shows the vCenter of that vCenter. And currently it shows as registered. And the connection status just changed to up. We also have a refresh button right down here. So you can click on refresh to get the latest and greatest information. All right, so that looks great. So let's take a big picture look at our overall process. So we've licensed the NSX Manager. We also integrated NSX with vCenter. That's all working. So what's our next logical step? So now that we have this in place, I would say the next logical step would be to do a graceful shutdown of our nested lab environment. So that way, if we want to go back to this configuration 
at this point in time, we can do so if we have snapshots. So let me walk you through, once again, the graceful shutdown of our nested lab topology so far and the process of deleting the old snapshots and creating new ones. And here's the process for that, and it's pretty important to do this in the correct order. I would recommend shutting down the NSX Manager from the command line interface. So we'd open up SSH, connect over to dot 21, log in as admin with the password we configured for the NSX Manager, and simply issue the command shutdown. And that will do a nice graceful shutdown of the NSX Manager. And then for the vCenter, we go to the vSphere Management Console for our nested vCenter, which is at dot 35, and we do a shutdown there from the GUI. Also, it wouldn't hurt just to verify in the vSphere client that you currently don't have any additional VMs that might be running. At the moment, we haven't actually launched any, so there aren't any currently, but going forward as we start deploying things such as edge transport nodes and other VMs, we'd also wanna make sure that those VMs are shut down. But for now, we just wanna go ahead and shut down the vCenter itself. And then after that shut down, we then go ahead and shut down the nested ESXi hosts. So that'd be A, B, and C, and we could do that from the parent physical vCenter environment, meaning the vCenter that's in charge of ESXi 6 in our parent slash physical network. So that's a convenient way to quickly and easily gracefully shut down these three ESXi hosts. So once we have everything shut down, we then go ahead and do a removal of any snapshots for these three ESXi hosts and these two VMs as well. And then once those snapshots are deleted, we then go ahead and create new snapshots before powering back on the environment. So let me walk you through that right now. So I'm gonna use Secure CRT for the remote SSH session. So you don't have to use Secure CRT. You can use any terminal emulator that supports SSH, it'll be fine. So let me click right here on the lightning bolt and let's create a new connection over to our NSX manager, which is at the IP address of 192.168.1.21. And the username there is admin, so I'll put that in and we'll click on connect. So on the first time connecting, it's asking me if I want to go ahead and accept and save the host key for that NSX manager, which I do. And now I'm gonna specify the password that I'm gonna to use to log on as admin. And then I'm gonna click on save password so that in the future, I don't have to supply that again. And we'll click on okay. And survey says we are good to go. Fantastic. So from here, we're simply gonna type in shutdown. And once we've typed in shutdown, press enter. We'll type in yes to confirm. And then we can go ahead and just close this terminal window. So it is now in the process of shutting down. So that's step number one. So our next step is to go ahead and do a graceful shutdown of vCenter, our nested vCenter. And to do that, we'll use the graphical user management interface on the vCenter server, which is at dot 35. So here's the management interface for our nested vCenter. So we'll log on and we'll go to actions and we'll click shutdown and click on yes. And now vCenter is on its way to a graceful shutdown. So we shut down the NSX manager. We've shut down the vCenter. And next we'll go ahead and do a shutdown of our three ESXi hosts, which we'll do from the parent environment. So now we're logged in to vSphere.physical. And here's our ESXi 6. And we'll go to the VM and templates view. And here we have our folder with all of our VMs. So the NSX manager is shut down because we did that at the CLI. Our vCenter is shut down because we did that from the graphical user interface for the management console for the vCenter. And now for these three ESXi hosts running as VMs, we can simply select each of those. And with them selected, right click and go to power. And then we'll do a graceful shutdown by choosing shutdown guest OS and clicking on yes. So those three ESXi hosts are now being gracefully shut down. So we'll give them a moment to complete that. And then once they're all shut down, what we'll do is we'll right click with all of them selected and we'll delete any existing snapshots. And then once that's completed, we'll then go ahead and create a new set of snapshots. And I would encourage you not to keep more than one current snapshot at a time, because again, once you have more than one snapshot, there's gonna be additional latency and additional storage and things are gonna slow down. So I would encourage you that once you have a state where you wanna to return to, gracefully shut down your nested lab environment, remove the old snapshots, create the new snapshots, and then restart the lab. And that way you can go back to that previous point anytime you need to. All right, so they are all powered off. Let me do a refresh here just to confirm. Fantastic. So with all of them now selected, we'll right click. We'll go to snapshots and say delete all snapshots and click on delete all. Now a heads up, this process may take anywhere between five minutes and 30 minutes. And so we wanna make sure we wait till it's all done. So I'll go to recent tasks and let me go ahead and look at running tasks. And currently it is deleting the snapshot on VSA nested and also NSX manager. And it also implies that it's already done with the 
A, B, and C because there wasn't that much change we made on the disks for those three VMs. So if we want to look at all the recent tasks, we can specify all here, and that would confirm it as well that the snapshot removal for A, B, and C is done. So we'll give that a few minutes for the other two snapshots on VSA nested and the NSX manager to be removed. And then once they are all removed, we'll go ahead and create a brand new snapshot for each of those VMs. And that way the snapshots for each of the VMs will be in perfect lockstep with each other. Also, while that's completing, because it's really behind the scenes, just ESXi 6 that's doing all the work here, we could go to that host, click on monitor, again, it's our physical host, and go to performance overview and take a look to see how it's doing. So if we scroll down here to disk utilization, there's quite a bit of disk activity here. So the green here represents latency, which is like under 10 milliseconds, perfect. And the purple represents kilobytes per second. So we're close to 400 kilobytes per second which isn't bad. And so that disk activity on the physical host is being done to its local data store. So the disk that it's using, we provisioned in a previous video. And if you haven't seen or are interested in the buildup to this point with all the details regarding getting the ESXi host set up and so forth, please check out the earlier videos in this series. So with that physical host selected, if we go to configure and we go to storage devices, here is the disk right there that we're using, which is just over 900 gigs. And we created a data store in a previous video leveraging that disk. All right, so let's go back to recent tasks. And we are almost done, it looks like, with removing the snapshots for the NSX manager. So let's go back to the VM and templates view. And we'll go back to this folder. And when that final snapshot is deleted, we'll select all these VMs here in this folder. So I've got the folder selected. I've got VMs up here selected. We'll select all these VMs and we'll create brand new snapshots for each of these VMs. All right, so it is almost done, approaching 85%. Oh, it's getting close, 90%. All right, and it is done. And just to give you an inkling of how long that really took, let's go ahead and take a look at all recent tasks. And here for the NSX manager, removing the snapshot. If we scroll to the right, the start time here was 9.24 a.m. and the complete time was 9.32. So it's just a little bit less than 10 minutes. So just be aware, it may take a while for those snapshots to be deleted. And now they are deleted. We can go ahead and right click on this group of VMs, click on snapshots, click on take snapshot, and then we can go ahead and add a description if we want to, such as just integrated NSX and vCenter, and we'll click on create. And that's just created the snapshots for all five of those VMs. And then once the snapshots are created, you might want to spot check just one or two just to verify that all took. And then we can right click and simply power them all up. And in about five to 10 minutes, they'll all be up and running. And in a few minutes when they're all up and running, the next logical question is, so what do we do with this NSX manager? And the answer is we're gonna put it to work by implementing some of the features and functions capable with NSX. And that'll be the next step in our journey together. So I'll see you in that next video soon.